So I've had a few people ask me about getting started in leatherworking and asking about the tools required. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, the basic tools to get started in leatherworking. So I wanted to start the video off by saying that I'm not a veteran leather worker. I've probably made six or seven leather projects. Uh, so what I say may not be the best, but it works for me. Um, so I thought I would describe the tools that I use to make this leather wallet. And I have a video uh, on my channel linked here uh, where you can watch me make this wallet. When you start leather working, you'll notice that there's all kinds of different leathers and, uh, that you can use to make your, your projects. Uh, to make it easier on yourself, I recommend starting with just getting some vegetable tan cowhide leather. You can dye this stuff to any color that you want. Um, and this is some two to three ounce leather that I picked up from Tandy. Uh, I recommend picking up something around two to three to four ounces for, for wallets uh, because as you can see a wallet is made up of several different layers of leather and if you have stuff that's really thick your, your leather, your wallet is going to be extremely thick. This is some eight or nine ounce uh, leather and as you can see if you were to use several layers of this stuff your wallet would be really bulky. So for wallets and field note cases, anywhere from two to three uh, or four to five ounce leather would be a good thickness uh, for your pieces. But to get started, just pick up a roll of this stuff. It doesn't even have to be a roll. Just go to Tandy's website and you can get half shoulders and stuff that are, you know, nine, ten square feet. Um, but just pick some up that's cheap to get started. You, you don't need to uh, stress over the types of leather and because you're going to see a whole lot of them. Just pick a roll of it up and get started. So to begin with, you're going to need some sort of self-healing cutting mat to do all of your cutting on. And I use an X-Acto knife and this rotary cutter to cut the, uh, the leather. They're both, I mean, they'll both work just fine. The rotary cutter, uh, I find, does a really good job. But you don't need the rotary cutter. You can just use a number two X-Acto knife. And when it comes to adhesives, there are a couple different kinds that you can use. Uh, you can use the DAP. Uh, weld wood contact cement or what I like to use is the eco weld uh, it's a water-based contact adhesive it doesn't stink like the uh, the traditional contact adhesives but some say that this stuff doesn't hold as well as the DAP weld wood uh, contact cement uh, but what I find this is just to hold the pieces into place uh, while you punch it punch the holes in it for the stitching uh, the stitching is what's going what's to hold everything into place um, after you're done. And speaking of the different types of thread, um, typically you want to pick up a thread that's been waxed, like a waxed linen or a polyester or a nylon. Um, I only use the, uh, the waxed linen. Uh, the wax makes it stronger and it makes it rot resistant. And of course it's going gonna, it's gonna to last longer in the, uh, in the elements, such as if your piece gets wet. Um, and wear and tear over time. The waxed, you want to get the waxed uh, linen or polyester or nylon thread for, uh, for saddle stitching, which is stitching by hand. The thread that I have here is the 0.8 millimeter Tiger Thread by Ritza. Um, it's a really high quality thread and these have 25 feet on them per little piece here or you can buy it by the roll but that's a, you know, it's a whole lot of money. Um, so this I think was seven bucks on eBay for, per color. Um, and obviously if you do leather working you're going to need all kinds of different colors and I'll link to these uh, in the description below but anything that's waxed linen polyester or nylon will work so if you go to Amazon I know I got an email from Bruce uh, Bruce if that the one that you link me to um, that will work fine for the leather working um, and plus it's cheap enough to where if you try it and you don't like it you're out a few dollars and you just pick up some other waxed uh, nylon thread such as this tiger thread on eBay and obviously uh, you want to use a pair of scissors to cut your thread. I picked these up off of Etsy for I think three dollars. Um, so Etsy is another great source to check out tools for the leather working. Uh, these were actually shipped from France um, for less than the shipping was three fifty and the cost of the scissors were three fifty. I'll also link to these in the description below. Uh, these do a really good job of cutting the thread real close to the source. So let's see, we got the adhesive, and let's talk about some diamond, the diamond chisels or pricking irons as, as some call them. When choosing a diamond chisel, there's a few things you gotta keep in mind. Uh, the first thing is the width of the teeth or the prongs. Um, something with real fine teeth like this, you're gonna have a hard time getting your needles through after 
uh, you punch the holes because the leather will swell back up a little bit. And as you can see, this is my needle here. Um, and I would have a very hard time getting this needle through here if I didn't punch it and then immediately stitch it um, because it's, it's already closed back up a little bit for me punching that hole a few minutes ago. But as you can see here, these diamond chisels, um, they're a three millimeter on the spacing, uh, which is roughly an eighth of an inch, and the, uh, the teeth are wide enough that that won't be a problem. So the second thing you've got to keep in mind is, um, is the spacing between the teeth. Something like this, you're going to have, you're going to be stitching for quite a while. Um, and as you can see, I've got my wallet here that I use, the three millimeter uh, diamond chisels. And that's roughly, the, the teeth are roughly three millimeters, which is an eighth of an inch. And the spacing is also uh, three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. Um, but as you can see, the difference between, between the, uh, the spacing and of the wallet here and this test piece of leather that I have, um, I used these chisels for the test piece of leather and these chisels for the prototype of the wallet and there's two things you got to think about and one is the appearance which one do you like better um, I personally like the look of the of the three millimeter chisels uh, and I don't have any four millimeter chisels to compare that to but the four millimeter the spacing is roughly a sixteenth of an inch wider uh, than the three millimeter give or take um, and these are roughly two millimeter. I'll have to look that up. I'll put a correction on the screen if I'm wrong, but um, the spacing, I just don't like the appearance of the, uh, of the thread with it being that close. Um, I like the, the appearance of the four millimeter, or the three millimeter, I'm sorry, because you can see the, the diagonal, the, the slant of the stitching, which is typical with any other professional leatherworking projects. Uh, with this, it just looks too clumped together. And also, one thing that I read, the closer the holes together, the weaker the bond is because you have less leather between the stitching. So another thing to think about when choosing your diamond chisels is the quality of the chisel itself. These are hardened steel, so the teeth aren't going to break, aren't going to break as easily as something like this. These teeth are really thin, so when you punch it in the leather and you say you got two to three layers thick and you go to pull it out, any wiggle room like that and these teeth are going to break off. I have a set of five of these that I picked up off of Amazon and all but one have a broken tooth off of them. These are actually really nice. Um, they were I think maybe 15, 20 bucks for a set on Amazon, but the problem is the spacing is just too close together. It took me probably an, an hour, an hour and a half to stitch from one end all the way to the other because the spacing is so close together. I mean I completed the whole wallet um, in about 15 minutes using the three millimeter spacing. And just like woodworking, you don't have to buy a whole set of these chisels. Uh, on the Tandy Pro line chisels, I think they were like 11 or 12 bucks each maybe. You only need two to get started. Um, you need something like this for walking around corners. And then, you know, you got a four prong for the straight stretches. All right, let's talk about dyes. Um, when you get your leather in, obviously it's the natural veg tan uh, white color, which is okay, as you can see. This is what it will look like um, after some wear and tear. It'll start to uh, add some patina when you use it. Um, but if you don't like that look and you want to go for something like this brown or the mahogany of the wallet, um, you can dye the, the leather. They have alcohol-based and they have oil-based and water-based dyes. I tend to stick to the, uh, to the oil-based, but the mahogany that I used was an alcohol-based and it, it surprised me. It did a really good job. Um, I, I've only used the fibings uh, dyes, the oil and the alcohol based dyes. I don't have any experience with any of the uh, other brands, but everyone recommends the fibings. Um, but give it a try. These are roughly six to seven dollars a bottle and they'll last you, you know, quite a bit. Um, so, and to apply this, you just want to pick up a pack of these wool daubers. Um, and you don't have to throw these away after one use. Uh, if you use this wool dauber for this uh, brown or saddle tan, just wrap a rubber band and stick it on the bottle because you can reuse these wool daubers to apply multiple coats in the future. For edge treatment, there's a couple different products. Um, I used gum tragacanth to first uh, treat the edge and what that does is it slicks it down and uh, it seals it off. You don't have to use gum tragacanth to begin with. Um, but just pick up a wooden burnisher. You can get a kit for five, six bucks off of Amazon. I'll link to this stuff below. And a lot of people just use straight water. Uh, so give water a try at the very beginning and see if you like the results. 
Uh, I picked up the gum tragacanth and I only use that now instead of just water. Uh, some people also use saddle soap, um, but I just I like the gum tragacanth uh, and how it looks and how quick it is to burnish the edges of the uh, of the leather. And this I painted using something called Edge Coat. It's a, an edge paint, pretty much. Um, they got they come in a couple colors for this brand fibings. They got a black and a brown, um, but there are other brands that you can buy uh, actual paints that come in all kinds of colors to treat the edges. And to smooth out the edge before burnishing them, you want to pick up some sandpaper. And if you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you already have some sandpaper. I just use some 120 and 220 grit to make sure that the edge is nice and clean. Um, just fold it in half and sand it. And the sandpaper lasts a really long time. These are the first three pieces that I used when I first started leather working. So just keep that to the side and you can reuse it. After you dye the leather, uh, you'll want to seal it to protect it from the elements. Uh, you got a couple different routes you can, well there's actually more than a couple, but um, I've used the acrylic resolution. It will make the, the piece waterproof, um, but it gives it a plastic appearance and feel. Um, so I don't use this that often, um, and, but I do use the carnauba cream to protect the piece. And it, I put a few coats on and it gives it a nice sheen and feel, uh, and it protects the piece uh, from water. Obviously you don't want to get it soaking wet, but it'll protect the piece while you're using it, putting it in and out of your pocket. Um, so I would recommend picking a bottle of that up, but if you're going to be making something that needs waterproofing, uh, give the acrylic resolution a try. One thing that I forgot to mention, when you're gluing your pieces of leather down, um, I just use these clothespins to act as clamps. So say that I was gluing this to this, I would put the glue roughly an eighth of an inch in, uh, tape it together, or slide it together, and use these clothespins to act as clamps. You can pick a bag of these up for a couple dollars and that'll be all that you need. You need a set of wing dividers um, to trace out where you're gonna be stitching on the inside. Um, you roughly set them to an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch uh, and then mark a line on the inside of your leather where you're gonna be using your diamond stitches. So you go all the way around your piece, mark it, take your chisels, set it in the hole, and then hit it with a mallet and then walk all the way around your piece. So you need a set of wing dividers for that. Some people use a scratch awl to outline their, their templates on their piece. Um, I've done that and I find if you're using this thin paper, it's really hard to get an accurate line without it going you know, under the piece. So I outline mine with a real fine tip marker. Uh, you just have to pay attention when you're cutting them out to cut on the inside of the marker so that doesn't stay on the edge of your leather, uh, but some people use a scratch all. You want to use something called a bone folder. Um, this is used for creasing the leather, like if, you, if you're wet forming something and you got it under the piece, you can use it to, to form the piece. And it also, I like to use it for when you're stitching through uh, several pieces and, you've already, and you're ready to pull your diamond chisel back out to use the bone folder to put pressure on the leather when you're pulling it up so it doesn't separate at the glue joint. And uh, another thing is this uh, edge beveler. This will put a little a light round over on your piece. Um, there's several different sizes to choose from and every manufacturer of these uh, will have different sizes. So a number two or a number three and a Tandy um, will be a different size if you're looking at an Osborne antique or something like that. And I recommend if you're gonna, if you're gonna start out with an edge beveler to start out with the, like a number two on a Tandy um, to get a feel for it, you don't want to remove a whole lot of leather. You just want to put a nice round over on both sides because you're going to be cutting it, flipping it over, and, and getting it from the bottom side as well. Um, so start with the Tandy number two to get a feel for it and to put a light round over on the, on the leather. When it comes time to put curves in your pieces, you can freehand that with a number two X-Acto knife or you can pick up a set of these chisels on Amazon for about 15 bucks. They're not the sharpest. But if you're a woodworker and you have some water stones or oil stones, you can easily sharpen these. And these work great uh, for the price. Um, just put them on the piece and slam it. And I had no problem straight out of the box using these on some two to three ounce leather. Uh, I could very easily cut, cut the corner off of the two to three ounce leather um, one layer at a time. And as you can see, these, this is eight ounce leather and I cut it using this, um, still unsharpened, out of the box. And when it comes time to choose the correct needles for the project, 
Um, I picked up a pack of these Tandy size zero uh, saddle stitch needles. And while we're on the topic of stitching, um, I highly recommend picking this book up. Um, it will teach you everything about saddle stitching and in about less than an hour. Um, it's really simple to follow. It's got awesome uh, diagrams and illustrations. Um, highly recommend picking this book up. I'll link to this below as well. When it comes time to holding your leather pieces while you saddle stitch, you're going to need a stitching pony. This is one that I made that has a little knob on the other side to tighten the clamps. And one of the issues that I run into with this um, is I didn't put enough spacing between the jaws. So a lot of times I don't have enough room for real thick pieces. So I'm going to be remaking this uh, and I'll film the process and I'll also make a SketchUp file in case you want to follow along. But so say here's my wallet. Um, when you're saddle stitching, put it in between. Tighten it down and you're, you'll be setting, your legs will go over this piece here. Um, so it'll be, I guess, in between your legs with your legs holding it down. And that way you have full access to stitch the piece, loosen it up, move it around, reposition it, and keep stitching it. Um, so you'll, you'll need one of these to, uh, to saddle stitch. Um, and believe it or not, before I had this, I just used the, the vise on my workbench here um, to hold the leather pieces. And one other thing that I forgot to show is when you're punching your, you, when you're using your diamond chisels and punching the holes, you're going to want something that's sturdy underneath the leather. Otherwise, you're going to go through your cutting, your, your cutting mat and into your other surface. So I just took a, some scrap uh, butcher block. Um, if you're a woodworker, you can make something like this. Um, just put it under the piece. And then when I hit it, the cutting block absorbs the, the blow. Uh, you need a nice solid surface for when you're using your diamond chisels on this stuff. Um, so just get you some scrap wood and use that. Um, it doesn't have to be a cutting board, but just get something that's, that's sturdy and solid to put underneath your piece while you're using your diamond chisels. I hope that helps. And one more thing that I want to mention is you don't have to buy complete kits of these tools already put together like on Tandy's website. Just buy the pieces that you need. Um, pick up the pieces that I mentioned here and that I linked to below um, and they'll get you started in, in the craft. And soon enough you'll figure out what you need, uh, what you want to buy next. If you want to buy higher quality of some of these tools, um, you know, you're more than welcome to do so. But this is a, a good beginner's kit that I guess for lack of better terms, to get you started in the craft um, for less than 150 bucks. Uh, and that includes a whole lot of leather. Uh, if you want to buy a smaller piece of leather, you could get into this for less than $100. Um, but I'll link to everything below. And let me know if you have any questions. You can email me at sean at simplecove.com and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, but I'll also answer them in the comments below. Um, but I hope you get into it. It's a fun craft. Um, and if you're a woodworker, it dovetails nicely uh, into woodworking. Um, because you'll start to combine the two mediums to make pretty cool projects. So I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next build.